So now that we've seen the definitions of reflective, symmetric, and transitive, we now like to figure out how do we prove things. So the examples we did in the last video, that was just some intuition to get us familiar with these three properties of relations. But we like to do formal proofs to determine something is or isn't reflexive or is or isn't symmetric. So let's take a look at these. So we want to take a look at some proofs. So to show that R is reflexive on a set, what we must prove, what we must show is that for all elements in the set, it is related to itself or this ordered pair of X comma X is going to be in my relation. So you must show this for all. So remember, so we have our quantifier here for all elements in this, we must show that it is related to itself. To show that it's symmetric, we must assume that X is related to Y. So we must assume that X comma Y is an R, then show that if this is true, so if we assume that X is related to Y, we now want to show that Y is related to X. Similarly here, now to show that it's transitive, we're going to assume that X is related to Y. So X comma Y is an R, and Y is related to Z. Then, once we make this assumption that these are both true, then we want to try to show that X is now related to Z. So we have this property of X going to Y, Y going to Z, does X go to Z? Now, obviously to show that that's not true, well then you're going to look at the negation of these. So then that means that there exists, show that it's not reflexive, there exists some element in A where it is not in our relation. So this X comma X is not an R. So there exists an element that is not related to itself. To show that this is not symmetric, if X, we assume that there is an X and Y that's in our relation, or show that X is related to Y, but Y is not related to X. Similarly, for transitive, we will assume here, we will show that there is some example of X being related to Y and Y being related to Z, but that X is not related to Z. So again, just work with the negations to show they're not true or prove these statements to show that they are. So if we take a look at this example, if we define this relation on the set of all integers, this relation we're defining as the less than or equals. So we're saying that a number is related to another number as long as the first one is less than or equal to the other one. So if we take a look at some things like reflexive, we have to figure out, is this a true statement or a false statement, right? Am I trying to prove this or am I trying to show an example of a number that is not less than or equal to itself? Well, in this case, we should be thinking that I want to have a proof that this is going to be true. So I'm going to say, let X be any element in Z. So I'm going to start with any arbitrary element in my set. Let X be in Z. Notice X is less than or equal to X. Hence, X comma X is in my relation. So I have verified that any number is less than or equal to itself, or that's just a basic statement here. So indeed, this is reflexive. Now if we move on to symmetric. So symmetric, now we're trying to figure out, is it true that if one number is less than or equal to another number, that then the opposite is going to be true, that then the second number is actually less than or equal to the first? Well, no, right? We should have that intuition of saying, obviously, that's not the case. So we'll have some type of counterexample here. Counterexample. So we could say, consider 1, 2. So we have this ordered pair 1, 2. We see that 1, 2 is an element of our relation since 1 is less than or equal to 2. Right, so we verified that this ordered pair is an R because 1 is less than or equal to 2. However, 2, 1 is not an element of R. So 2, 1 is not an R since 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So that is a perfect example of symmetric to show that it is not symmetric because we do have this pair that's in there, but by flipping them, we do not stay within there. Now for transitive, 
So now if we want to study transitive, again, we want to assume two things. We want to assume that we have one ordered pair and then the next ordered pair where this middle number is the same. They're both in this. Then we want to show that this is true. So we could ask ourselves some questions about numbers. So for instance, if one is less than or equal to five, five is less than or equal to seven, is one less than or equal to seven? Well, yes. So we should be thinking that this is going to be a true statement. So we're going to try to have some type of proof about this. So again, when we were trying to show proving things, we need to work in generality. We need to show that for all of these elements, this is going to be true. So proof, we're going to say, uh, let x, y, and z be elements of z. So again, we work with some arbitrary elements in this set, and we need to assume, we're going to assume that x, y is an r, and y, z is an r. So we make this assumption of these being true. Our goal is to figure out why is x related to z. So we can unpack this a little bit now. So we could say since xy is in R, this implies that x is less than or equal to y. So again, we use this definition of what is our relation to help us unpack what this statement is saying. Similarly, similarly, we see that y is less than or equal to z. So because we have y, z, this ordered pair is in our relation, we also know that y is less than or equal to z. So clearly, if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z, then x is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to z, which then implies x is less than or equal to z. Hence, we have x, z is in my relation. So we have now proved that indeed this is a transitive relation. So now we could say that r is reflexive and transitive, but not symmetric. So those are examples of a proof technique or counterexample techniques to be able to prove that something is or isn't reflexive, symmetric, and transitive.